Welcome to today's Academy Live webcast, Microsoft SOA Governance to Rival Oracle and IBM. Today's presenters are Sonia Hurlbert, Microsoft High Potential ISV Partner Account Manager, and Simon Barrer, Senior Systems Architect, Products at SOA Software. Sonia, you have the floor. Thank you, Sherlyn. SOA Software has been a managed par partner for the last couple of years, and I've worked specifically with Roberto Medrano, EVP of Marketing, for the last two fiscal years. Uh, SOA Software is a gold ISV competency partner, and one of the benefits of being a managed partner are key introductions to Microsoft account teams. Uh, most notably, First American Financials and U.S. Air has worked specifically with SOA Software uh, to win some opportunities there. As a managed partner, uh, some of the key things that we look for are uh, market leaders, and SOA Software has been on the Gartner's Magic uh, Quadrant, and uh, so it's been great working with them, and I look forward to uh, the presentation with Simon today. Simon is a senior systems architect, and he's going to tell you a little bit more about SOA Software, their application components, and how to win against Oracle and IBM. Simon? Great. Thank you, much. Thank you so much, Sonia, and thanks everyone else for finding the time to be with us here today. My name is Simon Barrer, Senior Systems Architect with our products group. I was meant to be joined with uh, Roberto Medrano as well, Executive Vice President of Marketing. Roberto will not be able to join us today. Uh, we do have contact information uh, for him at the end of the presentation, and he would love to hear from you in the uh, weeks and, and months ahead. The name of uh, today's presentation is Microsoft SOA Governance to Rival Oracle and IBM. Uh, this does sound a bit like a, uh, a provocative title, but it's really not. The key message of this presentation is that customers would like to invest in the Microsoft stack in order to implement and drive their service-oriented architecture forward. But one of the key things that they're often asking for is SOA governance. So as they're going down this road of building out services and using products like WCF, BizTalk, Windows Workflow, SQL Server, etc., they also want to know that they will have a governance solution that will be intrinsic to this SOA architecture and will sit on top of this architecture and offer them all the benefits that they're looking for. So the big question here is, can they look to Microsoft to satisfy all of these needs, or do they have to look elsewhere? Luckily, with the partnership between SOA Software and Microsoft, we do have an answer. There is a full end-to-end -end solution where Microsoft provides a very rich product suite uh, that allows customers to build out their service-oriented architecture, and SOA Software offers a governance solution that allows this architecture to be uh, fully governed, managed, uh, and with all the different attributes that customers are looking for. So over the course of this presentation, we're going to go into a little bit more detail about SOA Software, about how SOA Software partners with Microsoft, and how we can offer this end-to-end -end solution so that customers can realize their goals using a pure Microsoft platform stack. So why don't we start off a little bit with a background about SOA Software. So we are Microsoft Gold Certified Partner, Managed Partner, High Potential ISV. We also have a great presence at the Microsoft Technology Centers worldwide, which means that our products are installed to the MTCs and are available for Microsoft architects to demo uh, to various customers and to allow customers to interact with our solutions to see how our SOA governance solutions can benefit them. From a product standpoint, there's a graphic on the right uh, side of the slide here that's a little bit hard to see, but essentially shows how our different products fit in to what we call the SOA governance life cycle. What we mean by the SOA governance life cycle is the life cycle that uh, dictates what customers need to do with their service-oriented architecture over time. And just to, to uh, explain service-oriented architecture, it's simply a style of computing that allows customers to build services uh, that expose their application functionality in an easy to consume way so that both internal staff within a company and external business partners can access those services and, uh, and, and solve whatever IT problems we're trying to solve. That's service-oriented architecture. That's the way governance is the, the sort of the layer that sits on top but is also intrinsic to the service-oriented architecture that allows customers to add things like visibility into what services exist and what services don't, and also governance over things like what types of security do these services need to have 
Do we have proper monitoring over these different types of services? Do we have service level agreements that can be enforced to ensure that these services meet the requirements of their customers? And a variety of other uh, facets that are very important to ensure that this uh, style of computing can actually be governed and can actually meet the goals and needs of the customer. So within this SOA governance lifecycle, we have different products that uh, answer this question. Uh, on behalf of a SOA infrastructure. We have products like Portfolio Manager, Repository Manager, Policy Manager, and Service Manager, and these different products come into play at different aspects of that life cycle to ensure that customers have proper governance. So really the way to think about this in the big picture is Microsoft is providing the service-oriented architecture technology, products like ASP.NET, uh, BizTalk, Windows Azure, et cetera, that allows customers to actually build uh, their services and expose those services. And then SOA Software offers the governance solution that allows us to uh, uh, manage and control and, and govern those uh, services so that they meet the needs of the customer's organization. Finally, our Microsoft-based products are built fully on top of the Microsoft stack. Uh, so we fully uh, live and breathe the Microsoft platform. For example, we work with BizTalk, and our products run inside of BizTalk using all the native uh, BizTalk functionality. Our products also run inside of WCF, uh, and we, again, make use of all the features of WCF and uh, work natively within WCF. So customers that partner with us and Microsoft have a true Microsoft solution that leverages the full Microsoft platform and offers them a, a true end-to-end -end SOA and SOA governance solution. SOA Software has a great customer uh, list. We work with some of the largest, most successful businesses, both in the United States and abroad. From a Microsoft standpoint, some of our large customers that have invested heavily with Microsoft include uh, JetBlue, uh, First American Title. We also work with a Fortune 500 uh, biotechnology company. We're going to talk a little bit later uh, about a, a key success story with Scandia Bank based out of Sweden. So our customers are large uh, uh, customers that invest heavily in information technology. They have very large-scale needs. They look to Microsoft to provide the foundation of their service-oriented architecture with products like WCF, ASP.NET, SQL Server, Windows Workflow, et cetera, and they look to SOA software to help govern that infrastructure. So why don't we dive into what the solution actually looks like when it comes to SOA software and Microsoft. This slide has a bit of an overview of what a typical solution could look like. In the center here, you see Policy Manager, which is one of SOA software's products. Policy Manager is a register repository. It's essentially a web-based application that customers can log into. And this is both inside of a company and also a company's uh, business partners. And once they log in, they can view all the different services that exist within the infrastructure. They can understand who owns those services, what types of security are applied to those services, who has access to those services, et cetera. So already off the bat, they have visibility into this entire service-oriented architecture. Everyone has an understanding of what makes up this infrastructure, what exists, what doesn't, how you can engage, how you can make use of these services. Also on the slide, we see a lot of key Microsoft technology. So customers are investing in technologies like ASP.NET, WCF, and BizTalk Server to actually build out their services, build out their applications, but they need that governance layer on top. So let's take WCF as an example and talk about how this partnership allows WCF to be governed. We offer a product within our service manager suite that actually deploys to the Microsoft WCF environment on Windows Server. Once the solution is deployed, our technology can communicate with Policy Manager and ask Policy Manager for all the details of a particular service. What type of security does that service need? What type of monitoring does it need? Who has access to that service, et cetera? And we actually communicate with WCF and help instruct WCF on the correct way to actually uh, behave so that the rules and configurations that have been set forth within Policy Manager can actually be enforced properly. So essentially, you're starting off with a base WCF environment, but now you're augmenting it with this governance capability so you can actually see all of your WCF services within Policy Manager, and you can instruct WCF automatically to behave in the correct way to meet the needs uh, of the customer at the business level. We do a similar thing with other Microsoft technologies. For example, with ASP.NET, we have solutions that can be deployed directly to ASP.NET to help govern that infrastructure, including uh, IIS. 
We also work with BizTalk Server uh, to ensure that uh, the applications that are deployed to BizTalk, once again, can be properly uh, governed. We also have solutions for Visual Studio so that for customers who are using Visual Studio uh, uh, with, from within their developer community can have Visual Studio communicate with Policy Manager to pull down key artifacts to help developers quickly build service clients and other artifacts so that they can uh, uh, complete their work quickly uh, without having to uh, do a lot of legwork figuring out how to actually make services and make clients that can actually communicate with those services. So this is a, a, a representation of one type of a solution uh, that customers can, can use. And essentially, with this partnership, customers are using all this native, great Microsoft uh, uh, technology to build out their SOA infrastructure, and they're using products like Policy Manager to ensure that you have a centralized place for visibility and for control over things like security and access and monitoring and a host of other features. Why don't we switch from here into a quick case study to talk about a success story uh, uh, around uh, the partnership between Microsoft, SOA Software, and the customer. In this case, we have Scandia Bank, a Swedish-based bank, global insurance and banking. Scandia is a large Microsoft customer, and they decided to go with Microsoft as the foundation of their service-oriented architecture, investing heavily in BizTalk, ASP.NET, IIS, WCF, etc. When they first started out with this solution, they started out with uh, uh, some tactical approaches to service-oriented architecture and governance. It worked well for a short period of time, but then over time they found out that this just does not scale. They need a fuller solution, uh, one that's very robust, and one that offers them all the governance uh, capabilities that they need. They went out into the marketplace and they tried to find who can help us to actually govern uh, the, the Microsoft platform. They met with SOA Software. We spent some time explaining to them what it is we have to offer, the rich support we have for the Microsoft platform, and it was a very easy decision for them to say, this is the correct uh, uh, approach. SOA Software supports Microsoft in a, in a very important way, and between the Microsoft stack and SOA Software, we have a great solution to everything that we're looking for. From a Microsoft standpoint, Scandia used a lot of different products and technologies, including BizTalk Server, SQL Server, WCF, ASP.NET, and IIS, an important point to mention about SQL Server is that Policy Manager and many of our other products run on top of SQL Server. So all the different information that Policy Manager needs to persist about services and, and other artifacts are stored directly in SQL Server. In addition, we feed a lot of feedback back into SQL Server about things like service performance and monitoring and other information. So customers make use of SQL Server as a, a back-end data store that they can then data mine and query over time to learn about how their service-oriented architecture is running. So customers love the fact that Policy Manager and other SOA software products run on top of SQL Server, and that SQL Server is such a powerful relational database solution that allows all this data to be very easily stored and manipulated and all the other great features that SQL Server has to offer. From an SOA software standpoint, the customer invested in uh, Policy Manager, that registry repository runtime that folks can log into to learn about their environment and make modifications to their environment. We also invested in Service Manager Agent for BizTalk that allowed them to govern their very rich, powerful BizTalk environment, and also the Service Manager Agent for ASP.NET that allowed them to uh, govern their ASP.NET web services. They also made use of other uh, Microsoft technologies like WCF, and so we're looking forward to uh, their governance of those services in the future as well. So overall, this is a key example of a customer that wanted to invest in the Microsoft platform because of all the great benefits that Microsoft has to offer, but one of the key check marks on their list was they needed SOA governance. And because SOA software was in the picture and because they're a, we're a Microsoft partner, Scandia had a solution and did not have to look elsewhere. If you'd like to learn more about our partnership with Microsoft, uh, one great place to visit is soa.com slash Microsoft. We have a great landing page that goes into a lot of detail about everything that we've discussed today, but in quite a bit more detail. We also have a great white paper, Ready to Use SOA Governance for Microsoft. It's a very rich white paper that has a lot of content in it that goes into a lot of detail about uh, the partnership between SOA Software and Microsoft and how we can add great value to the Microsoft platform so customers can re realize this rich SOA infrastructure running on top of Microsoft but with a very rich governance uh, uh, um, solution as well. 
Finally, we'd love to chat with you some more. Uh, we have some contact information on this slide. You can reach Roberto Medrano at robertomedrano at SOA.com. I can be reached at Simon Barrer at SOA.com. We also have a, uh, a group email account, ms-products at SOA.com. And of course, Sonia can be reached at vsonia at Microsoft.com. The big questions uh, about uh, how SOA software fits into the Microsoft picture are kind of laid out on this slide here. One of the first questions you want to ask yourself are, do your customers work with these foundational Microsoft technologies like WCF, BizTalk, uh, Windows, Azure, App Fabric? Are these important technologies? Are customers investing in these technologies in order to build out their service-oriented architecture? Another key question is, are they trying to build out a service-oriented architecture? Because many large Fortune 500 companies uh, have a great need to further develop their service-oriented architecture, and they're looking to Microsoft to provide that foundational technology. So that's another really key question. But really the most important question of all is, do you want to ensure that the Microsoft platform can solve not just the infrastructure concerns about how do you build out an SOA infrastructure on top of the Microsoft platform, but do you want to make sure that all the needs can be met on the Microsoft platform, so not just building out the SOA infrastructure, but also governing it? Because if that's the case, then we have a perfect partnership and we have a perfect solution, and we uh, have a great story for Microsoft customers so that they know that they can get the best of both worlds. They can invest in the great Microsoft stack in order to build out their infrastructure, but they can also govern it and, 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 and check that check mark off their list because governance ends up being a critical, critical issue for customers, something that they're um, uh, uh, demanding. So that concludes our presentation. SOA, uh, uh, and SOA governance is a very large topic, uh, so we we're only able to scratch the surface on this presentation. We can go on uh, uh, quite a bit more about all the different details of service-oriented architecture and why customers are demanding governance and how we come into play. But hopefully this gives you a, a, a high-level idea uh, about um, the partnership between SOA Software and Microsoft. And uh, we'd love to hear from you, so please make use of the uh, contact information uh, on this slide. And uh, let's talk some more in the future. Thank you very much for your time. This concludes the SOA Software Academy Live session. All materials from today's presentation will be available on the Academy website within 48 hours. I'd like to thank our presenters, Sonia and Simon, and we'd like to thank you for joining our Academy webcast.